my welcome back. In this video, we're gonna work through number two and number three from that worksheet. Number two says, determine whether the set U consisting of all ordered pairs X, Y, such that X is greater than or equal to zero and Y is a real number, along with the standard operations on R2 is a vector space and verify all 10 axioms or find a counterexample. So what are the standard operations on R2? Well, that means the standard addition and standard scalar multiplication that we defined on the traditional vector space R2. So we could start working through all 10 axioms and, and um, until we've proven all of them for this set or we've stumbled across one that doesn't hold. When you get um, a lot of practice doing these things, you're going to start to be able to do it more quickly. So starting with the first one, the first axiom says if u is in v and v is in v, then u plus v has to be in v. So that's closure under addition. So what we have to do is just take an arbitrary element u and an arbitrary element v in this particular set and see what happens when we add it together. We can't take specific elements. We have to take arbitrary elements. So I've chosen x1, y1 and x2, y2. These are in U, so X1 and X2 are non-negative, and Y1 and Y2 are just any old real numbers. So when we add them together using the standard operation of addition in R2, we get X1 plus X2, comma, Y1 plus Y2. Now, because X1 was non-negative and X2 was non-negative, when we add those two numbers together, there's no way we can get a negative number. So X1, X2 is non-negative. Also, Y1 plus Y2 has to be a real number. So this is clearly in the set U. So it is closed under addition. The second property says um, when you add U plus V, it better be the same as adding V plus U. Well, we know that that already holds for any two ordered pairs in R2, so it's going to hold here because it's the same operation. Same thing for property 3. Property 3 says if you add V plus W and then add U to it, that better be the same answer that you get when you add U plus V first and then add W to that. And we know that that holds in R2 for the standard addition operation. All right, what about property four? Property four says that the set has to have a, a zero vector or an additive identity vector. It has to contain something that acts like a zero. When you add it to any other vector, it doesn't change the vector. Well, we know what the zero vector in R2 is. That's the vector zero, zero. And we know that the number zero is greater than or equal to zero. So zero, zero, that vector is in this set. And we know that it, is, it acts like the additive identity in R2. So it's gonna act like the additive identity here too. So our set U does contain an additive identity. All right, what about number five? Does it contain an additive inverse for every single vector in the set. Well, that's the one that might cause some issues because in this set, all the ordered pairs have first component greater than or equal to zero. So let's pick one, let's pick a specific one, the ordered pair one comma negative two. That's in there, that's in our set. Does it have an additive inverse also in this set? Well, we know in R2, the additive inverse is negative one comma positive two, but that's not in U because the first component is negative. So right away, we've bumped into an axiom that fails. Now we don't have to go any further. We have just found an axiom that does not hold. And so we can conclude that this set is not a vector space. We don't have to go any further. All right, so after you've done a lot of these, you will start to get some intuition 
And so you might look at a set like this and go, mm, I have a feeling number five is not going to work. And then you zero in on that and prove that it doesn't work. Um, you might have to try a couple of different axioms but before you find one that doesn't work. But eventually you'll develop an intuition that will help you um, save some time. If it is a vector space, you really do have to prove all 10 axioms. So let's look at the third one. So in this one, we're considering the set W consisting of all convergent series along with the following two operations. If you have um, a convergent series S1 and another convergent series S2 and any scalar C, S1 plus S2 is just the sum of the two convergent series. And so you have to remember back to calculus two, what that means, a series converges if the limit of the sequence of finite sums converges and it converges to a number. And that number is the sum of the series. So when you're adding two convergent series, you're just adding their sums. So S1 plus S2 is the sum of the AIs plus the sum of the BIs because those two sums exist. They're finite. And then when you multiply a convergent series by a scalar, you're just multiplying the sum by that scalar. And all of these um, operations uh, follow from the limit laws that you learned in calculus one. So this is kind of a combination of calc one and calc two. So we're supposed to determine whether this is a vector space. So it turns out this one is a vector space. And so to prove it, we have to verify all 10 axioms. And all 10 of them follow from the limit laws because the sum of a convergent series is the limit of a convergent sequence. The first one says if you have two convergent series, U and V, then their sum has to be a convergent series. Well, if we add together two convergent series, we can just add together the corresponding terms and then sum those up and that will converge. That is a conversion series. We learned that in Calc 2. So that's also in W. So it is closed under addition. Is it commutative? Yeah, you bet, because these are limits. So if we add up the first series, the AIs, and add up the BIs, that's the same, and then add those two sums together, that's the same as adding them uh, in a different order. So adding up the BIs, the sum of the BIs plus the sum of the AIs. And then the same with associativity. It doesn't matter the order in which we add them. If they're all convergent series, then it doesn't matter. The limits exist and they're just real numbers and all the real number properties hold. Is there a zero vector in this set? So is there a convergent series that acts like the additive identity. If we add it to another convergent series, do we not change that series? Well, the sum from one to infinity of the number zero, which is zero plus zero plus zero, <laughs> that is a conversion series. And so that is in our set W. And when we add it to another convergent series, Remember, we can add corresponding terms and it doesn't change our series. We still get the convergence series. All right, so number five, is there an additive inverse for every vector in this set? Well, if you have a convergence series, so if, you, if S is a convergence series, then it's additive inverse is just going to be um, just multiply s by negative one. So uh, negative uh, the sum from zero to infinity of a i. So what you're doing is you're bringing that minus sign and distributing it to every term in the sum. And so when you add s plus negative s, when you add those together, you're adding corresponding terms. So 
you get the zero vector. So yeah, every convergent series has an additive inverse. And so we can continue. Um, the same thing holds for scalar multiplication. If you start with a convergent series and you multiply it by a scalar C, and it, it converges, the series converges to a number, so you multiply that number by C and you get another convergent series. So I'm not gonna continue. All of these all hold true, and they all hold true by the limit laws from calculus one, because a convergent series is a limit of a sequence of real numbers. All right, those are two examples. Uh, one was not a vector space, the other one was a vector space. And when you're proving something is not a vector space, it's usually a lot easier. You just have to find one axiom that will fail. If it is a vector space, you have to prove all 10 axioms. And we're gonna be using properties of real numbers, a lot of algebra, um, theorems from calculus, calculus 2 and calculus 1. So you're going to have to dust off your calculus this semester. All right, I'll see you in some other video.